I told you to hit the door when you came back on Monday. Why you gotta think I'm stupid? I could don't know what you're doing. Call me baby when you want me. Call me crazy when you call. You know this isn't what I wanted, but I'm with you, so I got it. This investment got me dripping, so I'll take all my deposit. I gave you everything. You broke my heart in two. You owe me everything. Oh, no, I don't. Okay, hello everyone. Yeah, that's right. Hello and welcome to the second panel of Berkeley's K-pop Summit, which is totally virtual. For those of you who just attended the first panel, thank you for coming back uh, and it's great to see you uh, back here. For joining for the first time, it's wonderful to see you too. Uh, we have a, a big crowd in the room, uh, so it's quite exciting. Uh, I'll take a moment to say that the uh, K-pop Summit is run by the Berkeley K-pop Initiative or the KPI, which is a student-run group. This multi-day event is the first of its kind in many ways at Berkeley and is led by an incredibly talented and passionate group of student leaders at the college. This event is made possible by the generous sponsorship and support of the Professional Education Division, the Office of Global Initiatives, the Office of Faculty Development, and the Professional Music Department. So to Dr. Darla Hanley, Dr. Rob Lagu, maybe P. Jason Camilio, and Ray Sol, we extend our sincere thanks. Uh, okay, we have an exciting masterclass in store for you this hour with a very special guest who will first go through one of his works to be uh, before workshopping a student work that has been submitted previously uh, for this panel. With that, uh, with that, I will go straight into uh, introducing our guest of honor. Um, it, it is my honor to be introducing Mr. Jay Chung this evening. Jay Chung has been described by NPR as an Asian super producer. As a member of the legendary Korean group Solid, a group that was critical in establishing R&B in South Korea, he is a veteran of the Korean music industry with a long career that spans international markets. Mr. Chung has written and produced for Korean artists such as Kim Gong Mo, K-pop acts such as JYJ and Troublemaker, and Mando pop stars such as Coco Lee and Ame. He was also the founder and creative mind behind the Asian American hip hop group Asiatics. As a music producer, he has sold 70 million plus records worldwide. Mr. Chung's work also includes movie soundtracks and he has worked on such films as Forbidden Kingdom, Dear Enemy, Somewhere Oino, and Go Lala Go, to name just a few. 
As an integral part of Korean pop music history, Mr. Chang was recently featured in the documentary series, K-Pop Evolution, a YouTube original, which you can check out right on YouTube. He can also be found uh, in rich conversation about Korean music, both craft and culture in a new podcast called Talk Back On. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Jay Chung. You can give him your, your uh, quiet virtual applause. You can send him your internal wishes. You can give him an emoji, give him a K-pop heart, uh, but we welcome him. Tonight's session will be co-moderated by Matthew Ahn, president of the Berkeley K-pop initiative and Mr. Ray Sol, assistant director of global initiatives. With that, I will hand it over uh, to Ray Sol. Ray Sol, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim. Um, it's my pleasure and honor to moderate this wonderful event and with my co-moderator, uh, Matthew, on here. Um, so I know the first session, I don't know how many of you guys were in this first session, um, but it was really, really good session, very informative. This one though, uh, is a little bit different vibe. Basically we listen to music and then we'll see, we'll give you, or you know, the Mr. Chong will give you the secret of K-pop, you know, the productions that you can all use, you know, basically. So I have a quick question for everybody in this room. Would you mind write your favorite K-pop artist into chat box? I wanna see your kind of like a favorite, uh, you know, uh, the artist twice, I can say twice, yes. Crush, yeah, BTS, of course, yeah. Jiko, Blackpink, yes, so many, so many good, yes, go on, go on, yes. I can't even read this too fast. <laughs> Sam Kim, yeah. Right, Unji, yes, I love her too. Girlfriend, Crush, BTS, so many Crush uh, fans, Day6, all right. I mean, you know, you keep going. I mean, basically what I'm doing here is that I wanna know, you know, how, I mean, how wonderful it is actually for you to actually know these K-pop musicians and we listen to this whole thing together, even though it came from um, Korea right now, it's loved by everybody in the world. So Mr. Chong, um, I wanna kick off this session by asking you this one question. I talk about this a little bit of a secret here, but um, what is what do you think that basically, what is the secret ingredients in K-pop that has made such a worldwide impact? Hi everybody. Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, well, first thing is it's awesome. Uh, uh, the melody, the beat, uh, everything about it. I think it's uh, just just captivating uh, the audience all over the world. Um, and uh, we'll be discussing a lot of things about K-pop uh, composition, including uh, what we call bong, <laughs> right? Uh, what the Koreans call bong. I guess it's kind of like the the soul of. Uh, Korean music uh, that's still incorporated into uh, a lot of the K-pop music, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just uh, I love how it's getting global traction, and uh, I'm I'm just uh, as a, as a, I guess kind of a big brother in the industry, I'm very proud of where uh, K-pop is going. So, yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Like Pong, I guess there's a soul. There's a really good uh, actually interpretation of Pong. I mean, the, I'm just saying Pong, the soul of music. I mean, every country, yeah. every uh, you know, the, the the people they have like some sort of soul of the, the artist kind of uh, expression. Mm -hmm. like we have those very strong like a uh, soul of music. Sure. So this time actually uh, we have uh, kind of two different part of the session. That our uh, first one, I really want to let uh, Mr. Chong share his secret on yeah. <laughs> how he's producing well. his music and everything because uh, once in a while we have this type of session we host this so many times and once in a while our guests will share something that they normally don't share so mm -hmm. if you want to share your stuff with us and then we can actually use right away that might be awesome mm -hmm. okay well I've, i actually created this demo uh like a few days ago for for this session actually uh well, just in case copyright reasons, uh, I couldn't like place other songs. But uh, you know, there's uh, there's obviously thousands of ways to write a song, right? Uh, and I just want to kind of go over one way that I you know I approach a song. So, um, and I made an example of it. Uh, let me see. So I'll share the screen for you. So there it is. So. Um, this song is called "Let's Go." So, uh, very, uh, very basic. I know, uh, you know, students at Berkeley. You know, you guys got 
years of musical training and all this stuff. And sometimes uh, you have to kind of think in a simple box and kind of uh, almost uh, in a way kind of dumb things down <laughs> to some extent. Uh, so this demo right here, um, it's basically like a very upbeat kind of a rock pop track. And it's uh, and I wrote this ex uh, specifically for K-pop because of the structure. Uh, and one of the main things is um, like we don't like to keep parts too long. So like the intro, for example, um, you know, like maybe four bars right into the verse or something. Uh, and usually, like we like to start off with uh, something that's very catchy, like right away. Uh, you know, in most cases right now, people are uh, streaming it on uh, uh, streaming platforms or like on TikTok or Instagram, and you got maybe like 15 seconds and you want to grab people's attention within that time. So uh, this one, I don't know if this is like the best example, but uh, it's got like a short kind of an intro right into the verse. And uh, I'll basically explain the uh, the structure of it. So it starts with uh, like a very uh, short intro into the verse, uh, and then uh, the B part changes. And instead of usually usually songs have like eight bars per section. So what I like to do is like I like to kind of keep everything short. So like the intro is maybe like four bars. The verse is like eight bars, and then like the the B part is like four bars right into the hook. Uh, so here's an example. Okay, very simple. <laughs> so you got you got like uh, just a very simple riff, like um, you know, like a six to like four, a one five kind of progression. Uh, very simple riff, and basically, uh, so like usually when we write songs uh, with either you know my by myself or a team of writers or whatever, we usually have a track like this, and people uh, kind of tend to chime in on what different melodies they want to put in and things like that. And typically the rule that we have is like, um, like if the, the A part has a lot of staccato notes, like in the B part, we tend to have like, I guess what we call, you know, just longer notes or like kind of a less staccato, more like elongated notes in the B part and going into this, uh, the chorus. So like, um, and by the way, the lyrics on this right now is just basically like uh, like dummy lyrics. Uh, it's going to be replaced uh, in Korean or whichever language it's going to be in. Um, so we just kind of wrote like a just kind of random English lyrics to this thing. So keep that in mind. And then so uh, so like basically like uh, the A part. there's a lot of notes a lot of lyrics going on in the first part and then so and as soon as it goes into the b part it's more like yeah so the b part it's more uh kind of like legato just more like lesser lesser notes and I'm sure you guys probably write like some of you guys already write like this uh, to begin with. And then uh, when, when when we do the hooks, like I like to do like two part hooks. So usually like a hook is like eight bars. 
I like to make it like 16 bars. So like, uh, like for example, this song is called Let's Go. So like you hear that pretty much all through the hook. Uh, in fact, uh, so check it out. So right there, that's the post hook uh, after the first initial hook. And the, the post hook usually repeats that that same phrase over and over. And this is like, again, uh, this isn't the way I write every song. Uh, this is just an example of like how I approach uh, certain songs for like, like, radio and, and live performances so like like for for example on the post hook you know they could have like like crowd participation type of thing where you, you chant the hook and it's uh you know the audience could reply so so it's almost like you know, it's like it's like you're putting this word into people's heads like over and over and over for like 16 bars. So like it stays in people's minds. So like even if you heard the song, you guys just heard the song a few times. And then so like like maybe 10 minutes later, if somebody asks you, like, do you remember that song? You go, yeah, I heard that. The Let's Go song. <laughs> right. So it's it's a uh, it's just kind of a way uh, of writing a song that I figured out, like kind of over the years uh, to kind of repeat certain catchphrases and like uh, for example like uh, when you guys are doing demos for Korean artists or you know any any Asian artists uh, like people tend to like certain English phrases in the songs so like even if you do these kind of dummy lyrics like we, we like to put uh, the catchphrases in there so it and it usually ends up being in the song so something like let's go or you know I don't know uh, you know, it, it's like a phrase that most people could understand and say, right? So, like, you know, you don't want to you don't want to use words that are like completely like I don't know hard to pronounce it or things like that. So, I like to keep it very simple. And you know, I think the whole key of actually today's lesson is to kind of uh, like toning down. Uh, I guess a lot of like you know when people get really uh, too technical and musical about creating pop songs is when, when you actually start to lose the kind of the connection because you know like most most listeners aren't you know they don't have a music degree right so you know uh we like to keep it relatively simple so you know and, and again this song is it's just an example of this type of genre uh and i i do r&b and i do stuff for you know korea japan china uh and the u.s and you know we take different approaches to different songs but there are certain uh similarities uh when we do actually write songs and we like to keep the hook uh like very memorable after even just one listen and oftentimes uh like this sort of structure of writing like 16 bar hooks where you got the pre you got the hook and then the post hook that sort of uh changes that up and sort of reiterates the the main concept of the hook right and um actually um I've heard several demos from uh, submissions that actually use this exact uh, method to uh, to write the demo, and I, I was I was kind of like surprised and kind of pleasantly surprised by that. But uh, so, and again, uh, you know, melody is kind of a, a key thing, and you know, uh, so like like I mentioned this thing called pong in the beginning, uh, and a lot of the times pong is sort of associated with minor chords uh and it's it's this kind of a kind of kind of like a melancholy there's like this melancholy uh, undertone to the entire melody so like as happy as the song sounds there's this kind of like kind of like this melancholy kind of uh almost kind of sad undertone because it's it's written in a minor uh kind of uh, progression so if you listen to the uh the hook for example or I'm mean, even the B part, so. So it's not it's not entirely happy sounding like a major uh, like a you know like a major chord, so. And even the hook, uh, you got. So, 
I don't know if you guys can tell, but you know, there's like it, overall the arrangement and everything sounds kind of happy, but there's that kind of melancholy uh, undertone because of the whole minor minor uh, scale, and that's sort of what I was talking about with the, the whole Pong Chak thing. Uh, and actually, uh, this song isn't as Pong Chak as it could be, but I think uh, like we try to find like a good good balance between sort of like a Western and um, uh, like like more like the Pong Chak Pong flavor. Um, and you know like in terms of the arrangement uh, this song is like very simple uh, I mean you got of course like uh, like these live drums um, you know like basically kind of going through the whole song uh, to kind of give it that live feel and then and then I'm layering that with like these uh, this kick and snare to sort of just uh, kind of polish it up and give it more punch for the radio and things like that. And you know, and I, I didn't, I didn't want to make it completely rock because uh, to many people's surprise, uh, from my past experience, most people don't really feel rock music so much in Asia. I don't know why. Uh, so like. I always try to keep it kind of uh, in the in the pop sort of uh, kind of pop realm, and, and so I add like like synth parts to that riff, like um, so the basic guitar riff. Uh, and again, this is just a demo, so uh, it's it, a lot of this is going to be replayed and things like that. Yeah, very simple riff, and then we got like uh, the synth part going to kind of counter the melody. Uh, or well, actually, this part is going together with the melody. Yeah. And, and you know, some some uh, some countering kind of like arpeggio kind of. And then and then once once that uh, post hook comes in with. Let's go, da, 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 da. and then this this whole. And then and then in the in the in after the second hook, uh, there'd be like kind of like a dance break. So, so the, the chorus is repeating one more time at the end, and usually at the at the fade out we have like what we call that like kind of like the D part, another change, and it 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 changes, but it still like reiterates the chorus. Like there you go. So very basic, uh, you know. It's almost like it's almost like it's so simple that you know, uh, you know, is this being taught at a music school? I don't know. <laughs> but this is like uh, sort of like a lot of the approach that we take uh, when it comes to creating pop songs for, you know, like the radios and TV. Uh, and uh, you know, we like to keep it a certain length. Uh, we don't want the songs to be too long. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is. Uh, Obviously, for like you know, broadcast stations, you know, every second uh, you spend on there, you're you're basically buying time. So people wanted to kind of keep keep it in a certain length, so they have time to put in all the artists in the slots. Uh, and so like, and that goes same for the radio as well. So um, you know, first thing I learned when I when I actually started writing songs in Korea was like I was always told by radio stations like don't go over three minutes and thirty seconds because they won't play your song, <laughs> or like. Uh, uh, the irony is that one of my biggest songs in Korea was a ballad, and it was like five minute and five seconds. <laughs> and I think I think the rule was like you cannot go over five minutes. 
So like on the CD, we actually printed like four minutes and 59 seconds, but it was actually five minutes and five seconds. Uh, the song called Iba Me Kutishako, which was like a, a, a R&B ballad. Uh, but typically, um, like a lot of the broadcast stations won't play songs that are over like four minutes, like oftentimes, because it just takes up, it takes up too much airtime. Uh, so that's one of the things you uh, you want to consider when writing the songs, and um, you know, and you know, and whether it comes to hooks and things like that, you know, these days you're looking at, you know, like Instagram stories, uh, TikTok videos. They're usually about 15 seconds. So like, assuming people take 15 seconds of your songs, you know, uh, to make different videos or whatever, like you have to be able to get to the point in that 15 seconds. So like some people might want 15 seconds of no vocals. So like you might want, you know, have like a 15 second intro where people could just play that part in a video. And you know, in the hook, you know, like there's two hooks. So like they could choose between the, the first hook or the post hook to make, make videos with. And um, so all that is actually considered by the marketing team. So when they pick your songs, they take all that into consideration. And, uh, and they always, always look for the keyword like what's the hashtag for the song right so this song like very easy hashtag let's go right and then so like i don't know so then they go okay well let's go that could uh be used in like i don't know like a shoe commercial like a you know like athletic gear or whatever like you know and all that stuff is actually thought out in the process of writing the songs it's like uh you know, uh, and, you know, of course, you could just kind of write songs. And again, uh, like I said, this is just a demo for this particular style. And like for the stuff that I do for my own, I don't know, even like solo projects, I like I go completely different direction. But this is kind of like the approach that I take when it comes to like submitting mm -hmm. demos and kind of uh, planning out marketing uh, strategies for artists and things like that. So when, when we uh, when we write songs, we think of all that stuff uh, while we actually come up with the concept that that is really awesome actually this song is really catchy um, you know uh, that basically what happens here is that um, we want to make this session more interactive and mm -hmm. we want actually want to uh, you know open up a, a kind of a short Q&A for this particular uh, the part of the session I want actually people if we want to have questions I want to unmute your microphone maybe you can take maybe one or two um, the students can actually ask questions uh, kind of in that way. So anyone have any questions? You want to unmute your microphone? Is this a really good chance for you to speak with our, um, you know, the guest here, Mr. Chong? It was like, was that like a, was that like a crash course in songwriting? <laughs> like yeah. tw tw 20 minutes, I'm like, ah, yeah. bah. But yeah, that's, uh, I mean, yeah, there, like I said, there's hundreds, you know, of ways to approach a song and this is just one, so. We have uh, hands. Hey, yeah, go ahead. April. I saw April rose with her hand for, yep. for April. April go ahead. Oh, I actually wanted to ask, like, when you write songs, like, especially for pop songs, what is the most common chord progression that you use, like, in terms of, like, yeah, I mean, like, from your expensive career, like, what is a chord progression you always like tend to fall back on, like, if like feel safe, you know? Oh uh, well. Yeah, I'm guilty of uh, using same chords over and over, you know. And in fact, um, I think I think my go-to chords were always like I don't know, like like four, two, uh, six, like five progression, like like F to D minor to like A minor to G, kind of that. Like I don't know, you, you know, whether it's ballads or dance tracks, like that's usually like kind of like my go-to chords and then like you know if something if I can come up with something I would try to move away from that but uh, I mean you know like these days a uh, lot of the songs are written with like you know like even two chords like very I mean a lot of the like the cool melodies actually comes when the chords are actually more simple and when the chords become to uh, become very complicated the melody lines almost get locked in to the chords uh, and uh, there's really good examples of some of that in, in k-pop actually like if you listen to a lot of ballads uh and you know uh like legendary singers like uh, uh shin sung hun used to always tell me like the thing about his songs is that like when he's on stage he can't ad-lib because all the melodies are just locked into the chords right and like and he liked 
you know, when we're doing solid and we're doing R and B, and you know, we had like very simple chord progressions, and we, you know, we would like ad lib on uh, different chord progressions. He he really dig that. But then you know, he, he like he he's always saying he can't do that on his own songs because the chords were just so intricately written, like uh, with the melody line. All right. Oh, well, Matthew, who will be the next? Uh, we can um, maybe take one more. Uh, yeah, we'll take one more. Time. Don't worry, guys. We also have a Q and A at the yeah, end exactly. of the session yeah. as well. I think the next person who did raise their hand was Diana Rodriguez. Um, and we'll take note of everyone who rose their hands. Thank you so much for wanting to question, have a question. We'll get back to you guys later. But before we move on to the submissions of student submissions, uh, let's have Diana ask a question. Hi, Diana. Um, hi, uh, my question was basically, um, so like, how do you go about presenting this song to a label? Cause like, yeah, you wrote a great song, but like, how do you go about taking it to someone so that, that someone can like translate it and then give it to an oh, artist yeah. or whatever? Oh, okay. Well that, that there, there's so many different ways to do that. Uh, I know, I know a lot of, uh, songwriters, I think that's like the key question. Like how, how do you get it into the right hands? Right. So, uh, like, um, I mean, obviously, like, uh, like, like, there's publishing companies who are like actively pitching songs for writers in in, in their publishing companies, and then so the so the next question is like, how do you get signed to these publishing companies, <laughs> right? So, uh, like, like, uh, one of the things is uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of companies actually production houses that are looking for submissions uh, out there, and uh, a lot of them you know are, are accepting music through their DMs on Instagram and things like that. Uh, one. One great one is a company called Decade Plus Music, uh, and they're buddies of mine here in LA, and they they do a lot of uh, uh, placements in K-pop and uh, you know Mandel Pop and all that, and they take submissions and uh, and actually you know what, I'll, I'll put I'll put the uh, the information on the on the main main chat, um, so like you, you know, th th there's people who are taking uh, uh, submissions. So actually, um, yeah. So they're called Decky Plus Music, and uh, there it is. So there's there's one. So that's one company. Uh, there's Zumba's and all all these different companies that are based here in in the U.S. that specializes in pitching songs to uh, artists out in Asia. Uh, as for myself, uh, like I, I usually like. Uh, you know, I, I do everything based on relationships. So like, you know, I either know either know the artist directly. Or uh, you know, I know I know the label like owner, uh, so like we usually just kind of talk and uh, like me typically when I work with artists, I like to actually meet the artist, have the artist come to the studio, and we actually work on tracks together. And it often ways, uh, oftentimes that actually guarantees placement because a lot of artists they tend to gravitate towards songs that they had a part in, right? So like, uh, and you go well, like, how do you meet these artists? Well. It's just, uh, you know, like you have to go out and network and do a lot of things and, you know, try to reach out to uh, songwriters in your community, uh, try to like collaborate with other artists. And there's a lot of producers out right now, um, even on Clubhouse, that are, are looking to collaborate with people and, you know, that has track record in K-pop and, you know, um, and just this is music in general. So that's great. There's a lot of resources. Wonderful. Thank you for that input. Um, and once again, don't worry about uh, the Q&A. We have, we'll have time for it later as well. Um, for the moment now, let's move on to some student submissions that uh, we were able to see and, and pick and choose uh, some that Jay would like to critique on. Um, first off, is Darren Lee here? Darren Lee. Um, if not, uh, he is from Singapore. He attends Yale and U.S. College, and uh, he submitted a, a track to be critiqued on. Uh, should we go to people who are here, or should we just start with Darren? Uh, is Darren here? I guess I saw him uh, the earlier session. He's not in this session, right? All right, then maybe let's move on to the next one because okay. we want to have a much more interactive. Sounds maybe he good. might join later. Later. All right. Then next is uh, is Joy Yoon from Berkeley here. Joy Yoon from the United States, working positive music. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Maybe, Enjoy. I should, maybe I should have my cam on. Hi. Oh, yeah. Hi. Nice to meet Hi. you. Hi. We're going to share our, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to play 
your tune purple waves correct all right nice it's actually can i give it like a like a quick yes. explanation cool so it's actually i wrote this co-wrote this song with my producer she's in korea right now her name is yejin jun she's actually in the session if she can you say hi just so you can pop oh hi yeah so her and i oh. we've um We've been uh, producing and writing songs together for about a year and a half now, and we've like finally like officialized it recently under a name called uh, Roho. So it's like Roslyn R O Joy J O. But we love <laughs> it, so why not? You know. Um, but uh, so we were just in. I was back in Korea. Uh, actually like two weeks ago so we were just writing i was in her studio we we're just coming up with ideas and purple wave it kind of represents uh, a glass of wine not that we like to drink or anything but we just um, <laughs> wanted to be creative um and so it's kind of like a r b pop tune in english but we do have it in both english and korean but what we submitted is just in english uh and so rosalyn produced it and i uh, top lined it along with the lyrics, and so yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Yeah, listen to it. Yeah, exactly. Did listen you to did you wear the purple shirt for the song? <laughs> no intentions. Yeah. Uh, this is yeah. uh, this is my low key pajama, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no intentions. <laughs> no intentions. Right. Can you guys see the screen? Cool. I will play it now. Just due to time, um, we will stop it there so we can get to other submissions. But um, wow, that was a really wonderful song. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Sharing. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you. That's, yeah, that was great. That was one of my favorites on the list, actually. <laughs> oh, that uh, really means it. a lot. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, I was listening, to, well, I think there was, like, about 20-something, I don't know, there was a lot of submissions, and then, uh, like, I, I, I like the song because, like, again, it, you know, the melody, the lyrics, everything just sort of, like, glues the song together, you know, and, you know, and it's, it's not like rocket science where you're playing jazz and going into, like, the artsy-fartsy land, uh, you, you stayed, like, with very simple chord progressions, and you, you but you top light that very like uh, uh, in a classy sort of uh, musical way, and, and that's not so far like le out there that most people you know, like almost everybody could just kind of relate to this melody and and could soak it in. So mm -hmm. that's uh, it's great songwriting. Uh, who sang? It? Did you sing that yourself? That, yeah, the vocals, me. <laughs> uh, yeah, vocals sound amazing. Yeah, I, lo I, love so you. I love Thank I love you. Thank you. Vocals. Are you are you based in uh, the states or are you in Korea? Um, I was in Korea for nine months, but I'm back in uh, Texas where my parents are, so I am in the States oh. right now. Oh, for, wow. uh, yeah, I don't know where I'll be headed, but at the moment I'm in the States. Okay. <laughs> wow, I think I think you, you guys have like great future. Yeah. You know, awesome, guys have something thank you. you guys have something great going. Thank you. That may, really I actually, may I share your YouTube link in the chat box so people can actually listen to the whole thing, whole music? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, we uh, are kind of planning on releasing so, okay. this. Not so sure, but if you, if anyone's interested, um, I will leave uh, uh, Roslyn and my Instagram. Uh, uh, sure, what is yeah. it? The ID yeah. on the chat. So if anyone wants to, you know, <laughs> hit us up, then we're more than welcome to. Wow! Yeah, awesome! Sure awesome! Cool. Yeah, that's yeah. Thank Matthew, you so maybe much. we can do one more. Or, or yeah. Just, Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thank you. Let's Thank you. Uh, call for. Darren Lee, once again, uh, if you are here, uh, <laughs> you are most welcome to unmute and Maybe say can hi. Move on, you know, the, the plane um, is taking off. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's going. It's going. It's going. Next to next tour. It's going. Okay. Oh uh, no. <laughs> All right. Next is um, Jisoo Song, from also from Berkeley. Hello, oh, Jisoo. Awesome. Are you here with us today? Yes, sir. All right. I will turn my. Hi. Oh, there. There she Hello. is. Hello. I can't Hi. see my face, but I can see you. We oh, can all see you. <laughs> oh, hi. There you go. <laughs> Would you like to quickly introduce your song for us? Yes. Uh, this is already released. Um, um, so I uh, produced, co-wrote, um, top line, and also sang part of the track. Um, it's released through Blue Soju. It's a little um, uh, like a like a crew style thing. I don't I don't want to get too into it. I don't want to like waste time, but basically it's a it's a pop track that's mainly influ um influenced in K-pop. Uh, I think that's the simplest way to put it. Mm -hmm. I usually do a lot of um R&B, but um but uh this one is like one of my first like really bubbly pop I that I tried <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this was oh. one of the first like bubbly K-pop style, uh, style that I tried, and yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. So if you guys like it, go stream it. Uh. Wonderful. <laughs> Due to time sake, again, we will like fade out halfway through if that's totally fine with you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, okay. All right. Summer's out, featuring Jay Fung and Lucy. You're close, let's go. Let's fly out to a rougher with shades and sunny weather. Come on, just quit the show. Been waiting for this moment when everything is golden. Wait, what's happening now? Road tripping on news right now. The streets are closed. Things are taking a turn. Summer's been canceled overnight.
vintage perfume It feels like I'm in Waikiki Day by day, get a freaky freaky yeah. Watching those heads, making my palms sweat We're losing Cruise with me, we headed to the beach Burning with the city We bought a starter See, we played the whole song. Cause it's awesome. Yeah, yeah I had to, I, I had to just let it go. It was too. Yeah, good. It's, yeah, it's great. I love it. I mean, it's, it's like a hit, right? Uh, you know, it has all the the sort of the makings of a hit. Like you have you have a very like what's is it called? Summer's out. Yes, summer. It's actually it's funny because this song was released last year when the quarantine hit. Oh. So our uh, main motive was like, um, we're like. It, this is like this the our summer like our summer is like canceled our summer's wrong <laughs> this is so like foul summer's out like that's like the main... oh is that what it means oh yeah. okay, okay. I, th I, th <laughs> I thought i thought it meant like, yeah well, i guess kind of like school's out kind of thing but it is uh I, I like i liked how like you started off the song right away with with the the verse right so it mm -hmm. goes right into the song and then like the b part like kind of preps for the hook and it's already kind of a, a hook in itself so it almost has like three hooks, like the B parts of the hook, the chorus, and then the post hook. Like yes. uh, you know, I was saying like, you, you, and you use that kind of like that structure, and 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 so, sort of like hearing it for the first time, like I already know like, oh, the song's called "Summer's Out" because you, you hear it like kind of just ah, <laughs> right, <laughs> kind of repeatedly uh, over and over, and that's very effective and uh, and great top lining, great melody, uh, the you. great singing, um, yeah. You guys got it going on. Thank you so much. I'll also share the link in the chat. Thank you guys so much for the comments. Yeah, that's really awesome. appreciate it. Thank you so much. Maybe, Thank Jay, you. we could do probably quickly one more, I guess, um, maybe because he's keep five going. I guess maybe we can do one more. Mm -hmm. um, maybe oh, Matthew, okay. uh, yeah, maybe you can play halfway through and just quickly one more and then we can take a QA. and a All right. Um, once again, Darren Lee, are you here? I think you, were, you were the first one on the on. list, just so you know. If you ever see this recording, you were the first one uh, to play. Um, well, this is not a competition. Uh, oh, Luke, uh, yeah. I think it was from Malaysia or something. So maybe maybe the time, I don't know. Um, Luca mm -hmm. Faustini from Italy, attending St. Louis College of Music. Are you here? Luca? I'm here. Yay. Oh, hello. Woohoo. Wait. Oh, there you are. You. Hello, everybody. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. Italy. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Wonderful. Would you like to introduce your song for us? Okay. So um, I wrote this last summer because there, the, um, there was this YouTuber, Z Sander producer that like does K-pop edits and whatnot that like uh throw out the idea to like do a collaboration album thing i auditioned for it i got accepted and then like we basically did a camp uh through the internet people all over the world it was very cool and so this song i top line most of it except the first verse where like the lyricist like did his own thing and like did some production but it was mostly this under and um the idea was like to do like a kind of like red velvet horror concept but like 
uh, it's it's cute, but also like unsettling. And so we we throw in some like uh, Sophie influence, like to make it like very it's it, it it's a ride. <laughs> let's Wonderful. call it like that. I like it. Well, let's hear it. Really good. That does sound like yeah. my Velvet style. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. Like I, I picked this song too because uh, I'm a huge fan of Wave Racer. Uh, it had this kind of feel of this, like the uh, like the whole kind of like electronic music thing going on, and it was it was really cool. Had a, uh, again uh, had that double hook, uh, hook and a post hook. Uh, very catchy. Uh, just. You know, it, and it, it has that distinct uh, K-pop feel, and it's amazing that you picked up all that sort of, uh, you know, like the essence of K-pop in in one song. And uh, you know, you had you had like all the all the right parts and kind of the build up, and uh, and I love how like the second verse goes into the rap, and it just keeps changing. Uh, like you're saying, it just kind of like the script keeps changing throughout the the whole. Uh, it's like a musical. And uh, yeah. and I could imagine like a performance, uh, you know, on stage with the whole, you know, the costumes and all that stuff. So yeah, it's awesome. Great job. I have a quick question for you, actually. Um, is the Korean being spoken by um, non Koreans? Yes, uh, there are three singers. Two are Indonesian. Wow! Wow! Oh, I didn't oh. know that. <laughs> and one. That sounds cool. I think we, we lost connection for a second. Well, yeah, I, I, I was like, that's impressive. Um, I mean, that, that really shows like <clears throat> the path of Korean production and like the influence it's giving to people like you, where uh, you have all that excitement to speak in the language that is probably really like boring, but it sounds like it was like the native language. So like, I wanted to like praise you guys. Wow. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell the singers. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations, actually. So I know we had like a lot of uh, the good submissions and we went through everything. I knew that, you know, we probably gonna end up reviewing a couple of them, but if you, you know, um, I have a little list, I will probably contact you all the submitters that maybe uh, we can do something together later on. But at this point, we might Ooh, move cool. on to uh, Q and A. Uh, mm. So we have like around, let's say, four to five minutes uh, to the end. So like we did last time, would you mind raise your hand? Maybe we can take a two or three, you know, the people, students who can ask questions for Mr. Chong. Great stuff, Luca. Uh, Matthew, who, maybe who might be the one? I saw um, Asuka raise his hand immediately. Uh, we'll go with you and then... Uh, we will next go with Fabiola. But yeah, Asuka, you are more than welcome to speak. All right. Hey, man. So can you hear me well? It's... Yes, yes, we can. How are you doing? Okay, great. <laughs> so, Jay, um, what's the uh, relationship between the judgment of you judging your own songs in comparison to 
how they're actually placed or if they're actually placed. Like, mm. have you ever written a song that you got really attached to and it felt great, but it ended up not being successful and not getting placed in another one that you didn't like feel atta as attached to as the other one, but it ended up being really successful? Like, do you have any advice on how to judge oh. the music that you're writing? You know, uh, it's, it's like the saying, uh, uh, you know, fortune tellers can't tell their own fortunes. <laughs> A lot of times, uh, you know, uh, it, it's, I think uh, when it comes to my own music, it's, it's really hard to judge, uh, you know, and I always try to get like a third person's perspective on it. Uh, from my past experience, uh, you know, this this is actually, well, it wasn't K-pop, it was like Mando Pop, but there's an album that actually, like, uh, the artist only had like two days to write a whole album. So like, we literally cranked out 11 songs in two days, and we we're like, oh man, this is, this is going to be an epic fail. And, uh, we, you know, we literally just cranked out like 11 songs in two days and he, he was on a flight back. And, uh, and, the, and that, that album, uh, it was actually, actually an artist named Nikki Lee and it was his fourth album. And that album uh, actually won the Golden Melody Awards for the best album of the year. Uh, and he, he, he got the award for the, the, the male artist of the year that year. And that was like something that we, we didn't expect at all. Uh, we thought it was just going to be like be a huge flop, uh, but that, ended up being uh i guess it, it kind of goes back to like like if you can't write the song the first 10 minutes or half an hour we just like kind of moved on to the next and just kind of cranked it out but uh um th that was like a good case uh you know of course there's like a bunch of cases where <laughs> you think it's going to be a hit and it comes out and it just kind of like it's a flatliner right so and I've, you know there's so many factors too uh there's like promotions and you know the timing and all that so you know uh yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I've released albums like in, in dead middle of like like SARS, you know, like when yeah. it was kind of like the COVID at the time, you know, and everybody was like just scared to death. Uh, you know, it, we released an album right dead in the center of that one time. Uh, you know, there's so many factors, you know, but uh, yeah, it's really hard to predict. Interesting. So you don't have any special huh? formula that you can share with us. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> and, 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 you know, again, like, you know, the, the industry is sort of run by tastemakers, right? So, you know, in every A&R, every company has different tastes and, you know, it's not, it, sometimes they're not even like musicians, like monitoring your songs. So if you have a lot of musicianship, musicianship these, a lot of times, like it doesn't fall in the ears of people with musical knowledge, even like, uh, I know a lot of uh, A&Rs that doesn't even listen to radio, right? Yeah. Uh, and they look at it from more like, like I said, like from the keywords and, you know, like for more of a kind of a marketing kind of very calculated way of looking at a song. Right. So a lot of times we take that into consideration. Like, uh, you know, if there's a label that are, that's kind of known for that, then we would sort of like, like, you know, uh, take that approach, like, you know, have like keywords and things like that. So to better the chances. Right. But like, you know, like, uh, people literally get thousands of submissions. So like, you know, uh, it's something that needs to stand out, like, you know, and usually, you know, if it's not music, then it's the key words that sort of stand out. So okay. that's very important. All right. Thanks. Hey, thank you. Bye. All right. Maybe we can quickly just one last, um, so like a 30 second uh, question. Um, free someone. Wow. Who was yes. the next one? Matthew? It was Fabiola. Okay. Yeah. Fabiola, hi. Hi. Hey, How are you? Puerto Rico. I'm good, and you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hello. Um, Green from Puerto Rico. Hi. Um, Puerto I'm Rico. To... Puerto Rico. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask, how do you? Are there any tips for balancing instrumentations and vocals? I am an instrumentalist, and I, I never worked with vocals in in producing. And I'm, I'm very interested oh. in, in knowing your, your viewpoint and knowing how you balance instrumentations and vocals. Uh, I mean, you know, like there's so many different styles of music. So like, you know, obviously if you got like one instrument, like a piano and a vocal, then, you know, the vocal has to sort of play a huge part. But, you know, like, like for example, the demo that I played, I mean, it's got a lot of stuff going on. So it's, you know, it's almost like, um, like the like the music kind of uh like even without vocals it has some it kind of covers all frequencies right so like i i, I tend to like vocals very uh kind of like kind of uh we call it like in your face in america like <laughs> kind of very dry 
and not so like you know like when i hear demos and stuff where uh, actually like ambience is very important like reverb and stuff like that when, when it's like i think reverb is the one plugin that's used wrong the most and it's the most evident one that shows in a demo so like you know when, when i as soon as i hear demo and i hear the vocals and it sounds like it's in a sauna like it's, it's in the bathroom like it's echoing out and it's already like okay you know then i listen for the song content and the lyrical content because like the like the production uh value it's sort of like oh kind of like uh like almost shattered at that moment right so uh like i i you know i think the safest way to like do it is to kind of keep the vocals more like kind of in the center and sort of uh and, and one way i do that is uh, uh i don't know if you're a technical person but i like to use delay more than uh rever reverb because reverb tends to drown like kind of uh, drying out the vocals uh, unless you do other things like like side chaining it and things like that but that's like a whole another thing but if you want to just do it easy uh just put slight quarter note delays on your vocals and it, it works like magic that's that's the best way to do it well awesome thank you hey thank you so much fabiola and i guess uh, it, this is this is it i mean i'm so sorry to say that but because time flies right that's so, so quick hour, that's yeah, already an hour yeah, yeah i know so uh, this is a, it's been an amazing uh, session i met you and uh, jay and why don't uh, we let uh, the dr kim chime in a little bit and just uh, do some uh, closing remarks here but uh to me from me like this is an amazing session actually uh, I, I hope that everybody learns so many things from you uh, dr uh, mr chong Oh, thank you guys for the invite. I mean, thank you for all the questions and yeah. Wow, I like I, you know, I try I try to talk faster, but you know. It's, it's... <laughs> yeah, we appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, Raisin, thank you for tossing it over. I thought uh, you know you would close out the session, but thank you so much for an enriching and uh, illuminating hour. And thank you to all the student submissions. They were incredible. Uh, yeah, it's really awesome. good stuff. So we just want to give a shout out to them. Um, all the submissions were, were, were really good. So there's my, yeah. my uh, Zoom clap for you. But um, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're doing illegal for keeping you two minutes past the hour here. Uh, we don't want you to turn into a pumpkin. So we're going to have to uh, close it out. But thank you so much, uh, Jay Chung, for, for your time, for being so generous and for, for sharing with us your insights. Um, you know, this thing about the secret sauce of K-pop, you know, this is an ongoing thing. So, yeah. you know, somebody will write a dissertation on it one day. What is the secret sauce? <laughs> yeah. The musical secret sauce. Uh, so so we'll wait for that. Um, we, we do have a, an outro song and a slide. And, uh, you know, uh, check out Jay Chung's um, Insta and Twitter handles. And uh, his. Uh, I, will, I will drop in the chat some of uh, a couple of links to his uh, current or recent projects. Um, and if you have not already, check out this uh, document, YouTube documentary series, K-Pop Evolution. It's, uh, it's available on the YouTube original. Jay Chong is featured um, because he is a, a, a great uh, in, in the history of Korean pop music. He's featured in that first episode, it's a series of seven episodes in that season one. Um, uh, so, so there think, you have think, it. Thank you so much. Th I'm sorry, Jay, did you have a- I think I'm in, I think I'm in the Jurassic period of uh, the, <laughs> the Jurassic period. <laughs> The very first episode of K-pop uh, evolution. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that R&B song, uh, holding on to the end of tonight. You know, go check it out. It's from the mid '90s. I, I think it was like '95 or '96, something like that. Uh, great song. Yeah. I listened to it when, you know, when I was growing up. So, yeah. um, thank you so much for your time and uh, join us tomorrow. You can check out the panels for tomorrow if you have not already on kpopsummit.net. Thank you so much for uh, uh, for for moderating Raisin Zing and Raisal and Matthew Ahn, president of KPI. Everyone have a good night and we'll see you tomorrow and uh, stay for the for Jay's song if you can and you need to log off. Uh, sorry we kept your four minutes over. See you all tomorrow. Okay. Thank you so much everyone. Bye everybody. Good night. Good night. I invite everyone to express your thanks directly to Mr. Jay Chung in the chat. Ah, thank you.